Welcome back, everybody, to the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on MLB The Show 20. As today, we continue season number three here towards the latter part of July. Currently, our Pirates are 65 and 40, first place in the NL Central. Currently sitting at the uh, top spot in the National League up to this point. Coming off a four-game set against Milwaukee where they took three of four, which is big because we're obviously in a tight division race with them. We do have the trade deadline today. We're not going to start with the trade deadline in this episode. That'll be a little bit later on, so make sure to stay tuned to see what types of moves we end up making. Uh, however, uh, obviously the trade deadline is a very big deal regardless. We do have a series in Dodger Stadium to open things up. Then we got the trade deadline opportunity for us to try to break away from some of the other National League contenders and really be the face of the conference going in, or the favorite of the conference, excuse me, going into the postseason. We're currently four games ahead of Milwaukee in the National League Central. Cubs are starting to kind of quiet down now, finally. I'm surprised they kept it this close in the division for this long. And then looking at the wild card race, which is obviously very important for us, if we hold the one seed, then we'll play the winner of a wild card game. Currently, Brewers, Padres, and Nationals all in the mix for that. Cubs, Phillies, Dodgers, uh, not looking too hot, but I suppose that they still uh, have a chance uh, to potentially make it. So the National League is very balanced. Then you have the American League East here, who has three top-tier teams and the 26-79 and 79 Baltimore Orioles. That's really bad. <laughs> I mean, they don't have a single player above an 80 overall, which is pretty embarrassing when pretty much our whole Major League roster is 80s and above for the most part. So uh, kind of an oof for them. Let's take a look at the numbers real quick. Brian Reynolds has not been great the past month or so. The average is down to right around 300 OPS for the first time in this series uh, is under 900. Uh, Eduardo Escobar having a nice year. He's obviously been very good the past month or so, which has been great to see. Josh Bell still kicking butt. He leads the National League in batting average and is pretty high up there in the home run department as well. Dylan Carlson continuing his phenomenal uh, breakout campaign. Uh, he obviously is a first-time All-Star this year, which is awesome. He's hitting for good contact, good power, really everything you love to see. Benny Lynn continuing his solid rookie year. Bo Bichette. It's obviously had an up and down campaign. The power isn't quite where we want it, but the contact for the most part has been fine. Francisco Mejia is still cooking. O'Neal Cruz is still cooking as well. So for the most part, the lineup has been really, really good this year. Uh, I believe we're currently second in batting average and then first in home runs in all of baseball. So doing really well there. Looking at the bench players, Mark Kahn has been awesome lately. Brian Hayes has been pretty solid. Uh, Williams Astudio has been all right, Hanniger as well, and then Yandy Diaz has been doing his thing for us. Looking at the pitching, obviously the rotation's been awesome this year. James and Tyone continuing his phenomenal year, currently with a sub one whip, which is incredible, and he is quietly having a Cy Young caliber season. I don't believe he's in the top three uh, voting for Cy Young. Why I don't know, but. It is what it is. Still got to uh, prove the doubters wrong, I guess. And obviously, uh, the future of this rotation, in my opinion, is in a little bit of a limbo because Tyone, Julio Urias, and Joe Musgrove all have their contracts up at the end of next season. They're all going to be unrestricted free agents after that, and we cannot pay all three of them. I think based on Jamison Tyone's play, I think it would be crazy not to uh, bring him back, but... Looking at Urias and Musgrove, I think it only makes sense to bring run, one back long term. Now, obviously, we got like a year and a half to decide pretty much, uh, but there are obviously plenty of factors going into this. Urias is younger. Urias is a lefty. We don't have any other starting caliber lefties coming up soon or currently in the rotation. Uh, however, Musgrove has performed better. He's playing better this year. He's proven to do well with our team. Urias has not. So, uh... Obviously, some questions there. If we look at the rest of the rotation, Yamamoto, Keller, they're doing well. Uh, Waddle's doing solid. Michael Givens starting to really play some of his best baseball. Manuel Clase continuing to try to improve after that awful start. Edgar Santana's barely pitched so far, but he's doing well. Richard Rodriguez has not been great since he's been called up, but I guess he could be doing worse. And then the back end of the bullpen, Ryan Presley and Ken Giles have both been really good this season, especially Ken Giles. I mean... Uh, his whip is filthy. I don't remember the exact number. 0.81. 0.81. 
yeah, um, that's pretty nasty. So here we go, game one of a four-game set at the illustrious Dodger Stadium. The LA Dodgers not playing as well this season as they do normally. Currently 51 and 54. Pittsburgh obviously 65 and 40. Usually those records are flipped around. The Pirates are mediocre and the Dodgers are elite. Here's a look at both lineups, one to nine. Dodgers have four lefties going back to back to back to back, which is interesting. But Tyone is a righty. None of the Pirates' main relievers are lefties. So, you know, I guess it does make sense. On the mound for the Dodgers is Bueller. Is this Bueller? Yeah, it, it's Walker Bueller, whose numbers are even better than Jameis and Tyone's, which is incredible. But Walker Bueller has been insane this season. 2 on, 1 out for Dylan Carlson. That one hits off of Bueller's glove. It will drop for a base hit. And the bases are juiced for the Japanese sensation, Benny Lin. He's just a winner shot because he's just looking. Going down on the slider. Bases are now loaded for Bo Bichette with two outs. And he will strike out. So Pittsburgh leaves some juice through one. Obviously, we saw Jamison Tyone's numbers. He has been a rock star this season. Let's see if he can keep it up in this one against L.A. Lorenzo Cain leading things off 2-2 count. That one is hit nicely into left, and it will drop for a base hit. Dylan Carlson has trouble fielding it. So already the Dodgers have gotten themselves a base runner on here pretty early into this ball game. Two gone now for Max Muncy. He's going to look at the high and inside 12-6 curve ending the frame as we go to the second. Game still scoreless. O'Neill Cruz going to go down on the knuckle curve as both Bueller and Tyone are two of the uh, game's best. They, here they are facing off on this play. The Pirates batters have had trouble getting the ball off the bat against Bueller. Yet, Jamison Tyon, of all people, is ripping singles. So, I don't know. I find that kind of impressive. Here's Brian Reynolds now. 1-2 pitch. He does put the bat to the ball, but uh, it will not drop for a base hit. Lorenzo Kane will make the catch ending the inning. And this one is still scoreless as we go to the bottom of the second. Carlos Rincon up at the plate. He will get a single. Kibert Ruiz, the catcher, was thinking about going to third, but will stay at second. Dodgers now got two on, two outs for the pitcher. Walker Bueller, who will strike out, ending the frame. Pirates get themselves out of a jam there as we go to the third inning. Eduardo Escobar leading things off. He's going to draw a walk. That cutter was near his kneecaps for what it's worth. Now here is Josh Bell, 2-1 count. And that one is crushed in the left field. It'll go over. Uh, Carlos Rigon's head, and it will drop for extra bases. The Pirates now got two runners in scoring position with nobody out, and now this is their opportunity to drive them home. Dylan Carlson up at the plate, lines that one to right. It will be caught by Cody Bellinger. We know Bellinger is a rocket of an arm, but he's not making that throw. Uh, the runner, Escobar, scores safely. Bell advances to third. Now here is Benny Ling, 3-1 count. He will ground this one. To Gavin Lux, who makes an incredible uh, diving play. Bell, however, scores, and the Pirates will now take a 2 nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the third. Lorenzo Kane hits that one hard off of Jamison Tyone. It would be an out. Tyone a little bit shaken up after that play, but he will be fine to continue being a tough cookie right there. Now we got a runner on, two gone for Max Muncy. And this is an opportunity to capitalize, make this game a little bit closer, or get a weak fly out into foul territory as Eduardo Escobar makes the catch. On the fourth, here's Jamison Tyone. He already has one base hit today, and he's going to get another. Jamison Tyone, of all people, is two for two against maybe the best pitcher in baseball this season, Walker Bueller. That's pretty incredible. Unfortunately, it won't really matter as Brian Reynolds does ground out to second. Gavin Lux has a little bit of trouble fielding it. Uh, but he does get the out, and we go to the bottom of the fourth. Here's Kibert Ruiz. He got a hanging curveball, and he just looks at it. Got to take advantage of a pitch like that as we now advance to the fifth inning. Here's Eduardo Escobar. He's drawn a pair of walks today. Will strike out the, at the high four-seam fastball from Bueller, his seventh K of the day. Following batter is going to be Josh Bell, and he's going to go down looking on the cutter. That was right down Main Street, too. A little bit surprised he didn't swing at that one. Now here's Benny Ling, runner on, and a 1-2 count. He strikes out, and this is the uh, regular type of inning you get here from Walker Bueller. That would actually end his day, surprisingly. He only went five innings, pitched quite well as Carlos Rincon strikes out. Here's the pinch hitter, 
Kevin Newman, former Pittsburgh Pirate. Of course, he was, him along with Trevor Williams were traded in the offseason for Julio Urias. And Newman uh, gets a hit against his former team. However, Corey Seager, a couple batters later, will strike out. And it doesn't really matter as Victor Gonzalez will now be on the hill for the Dodgers, his 45th appearance. He's been pretty much average this year. Not great, not bad either. Here's O'Neill Cruz. He is a lefty. He usually hits quite well against lefties. Uh, however, he would fly out. And in the inning, good one, two, three frame for Gonzalez as we go to the bottom of the sixth, where things start to get interesting for the Dodgers. They want to make this game a little bit closer, and they will get an RBI triple. Just like that, they will cut the lead in half, and it's now two to one. Here is David Bodie now, crushes that one into left. It has the distance to get over the fence, and just like that, with one swing of the bat, the Los Angeles Dodgers will take a 2-3 to three lead. Bodie with his 14th home run of the season. Here's Kiber Ruiz now, weak hit into center, or right center. Reynolds does not make the play. Ruiz is an idiot for trying to go to second. However, he was somehow safe. Gutsy clip play there, just a, a very unwise play by Ruiz to keep going, but I guess it worked out. Doesn't really matter though, as Matt Beattie, the pinch hitter, will fly out to left. Carlson makes the play, and we go to the seventh. Dylan Floro now in for the Dodgers, 3.24 ERA. This is his 47th game of the season, and well, things were starting off well, but then Eduardo Escobar came to the plate and had something to say about that. Escobar goes deep in a right, his 22nd home run of the season, and the Pittsburgh Pirates, just like that, will tie it up at three as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Edgar Santana now into the game. He has not allowed a run yet this season. He's only pitched in three games, so that doesn't really say much. This is his fourth appearance. First batter of the inning, going to rip a single into center field. That is Lorenzo Cain. So now uh, one out for Cody Bellinger. He is going to strike out. And uh, we go to the next frame. Pedro Baez in for the Dodgers. 34 years old. He's what I like to call Mr. Reliable. Not a guy who's flashy, but has continued to uh, do the job and be a really steady reliever for the Dodgers. There's Dylan Carlson striking out. Count is full now for everybody's favorite rookie. Big Ding Lang. Daniel Lane goes deep into right center and the potential go-ahead run as the Pirates will now take a 4-3 lead. Benny Lane with his 22nd home run of the season. You really do love to see it as it is now 4-3. Bo Bichette trying to come in on the fun. Instead, he gets plunked by the pitch, so he will take his base. Two gone now for O'Neill Cruz. It's a pretty quiet day. He's going to Fly that one out into left. Carlos Rincon will make the play, but still a successful inning as Benny Lynn goes deep, giving the Pirates the lead. We go to the bottom of the eighth. David Bodie, he's more blind than Helen Keller. I don't know what he's swinging at. Got fooled by the slider. And we go to the ninth. Trevor Hildenberger is now in for Los Angeles. He's had an average year, nothing more, nothing less. Eduardo Escobar strikes out, so the score will remain 4-3 as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Here's Ken Giles on for the save in 31 save appearances. He's gotten 30 saves this year, which is quite impressive. As uh, there's Kike Hernandez uh, striking out, swinging. Final hope at the game for the Dodgers is Lorenzo Kane. He's going to fly out to right. Josh Bell makes the play, and the Pittsburgh Pirates will win it by a final score of 4-3. Good win for Pittsburgh. James and Tyon, I feel, pitched quite well. Didn't do great in the sixth inning, but every other inning he was stout. Same can be said for Walker Buehler. He allowed a couple runs in the third inning, but other than that, uh, I feel he pitched very well. Looking at the box score, the only pirate of multiple base hits today is Jamison Tyon, which is pretty ironic. Home runs for Escobar and Lang. They drove in runs along with Dylan Carlson. Uh, Edgar Santana is the one who gets the win. Here's a look at the numbers for the LA Dodgers. Uh, the only home run of the game was for David Bodie. He drove in two runs. Gavin Lux drove in another. So here we go. We will now simulate to the trade deadline 70 and 41. One win more than the nice total of 69. And now it's time for our Pirates to make our move. And the idea that I've brought up the past couple episodes is going after a left-handed reliever. We obviously don't have uh, that guy in the bullpen who we can trust who is a lefty. I wanted to find a guy who obviously is left-handed. 
obviously is very good, does not have a lot of time left on their contract, and is on kind of a bad team, so it makes sense. And the perfect fit here is Will Smith of the Atlanta Braves. They're 55 and 57. They're not awful, but considering he's an older player, he's 32, he's going to be a free agent at the end of his season, and the Braves aren't really contending, they might as well go out and get a few young prospects, and a deal would be done. Going to Atlanta would be Michael Franco, who was signed in the offseason. He's actually pretty much just in this trade to make the money work. Uh, the prospects in this deal are Mark Queen, Ball Quinn, uh, Caneo, a shortstop, and then Rodolfo Martinez, a relief pitcher. Both of them have B potential, but neither of them, I feel like, really the future in our organization. We're also going to be getting a first base prospect, Braxton Davidson. He doesn't really have a whole lot of upside, so... I think, obviously, the big piece here in this trade is going to be Will Smith. He's going to be a big addition to our bullpen, and I'm excited to have him. But we would not be done in the trade market yet. Uh, Rossell Herrera from the Yankees is a very interesting player whom I came across. He's a utility guy uh, who's a well-rounded player. He's a free agent at the end of the year, and we're not going to have him start in the big leagues. So you're probably wondering... Why would we trade for a guy who's not going to play in the majors and is going to be a free agent at the end of the year? Well, I think this guy actually is a pretty nice future for our organization. I definitely plan on bringing him back in the offseason. Going to New York will be catching prospect Freddie Furman, relief prospect Anderson Polanco, and outfield prospect Sean Bush. Bush is a player we drafted back in season number one. I like his upside. I think he, his uh, B potential is like 88 or 89, but he has 36 durability. You can't be a productive major league player if you keep getting hurt. So that's why I was so willing to trade him away. And three guys who didn't really have a giant future in our organization. Uh, I think that's a fair trade for us on paper. It doesn't look great, but I'm fine with it. Since we traded Freddie Furman, I wanted to go out and get a catching prospect. Going to swap uh, minor leaguers with Milwaukee. We're going to give them relief pitcher Alan Reyes. And we'll be acquiring catcher Santiago Chavez. Neither of whom really have a ton of major league upside. But we need another catcher in the organization since we just traded away Freddie Furman. So Will Smith will now be one of the setup guys in the bullpen. And now we go to the first game after the trade deadline against the Chicago Cubs here at PNC Park. The Cubs are currently 56 and 54, pretty much league average. Obviously, they started the year off really hot and have kind of cooled down, which isn't really a huge surprise to me since on paper their roster is not the best. We look at both lineups 1-9, to nine. Bo Bichette getting the day off in this one, Yandy Diaz getting the start, and O'Neill Cruz is hitting towards the top of the lineup. He's getting the 2 spot, Escobar at the 6 spot, I believe, as Julio Urias on the mound for the Pittsburgh Pirates, 11-5, 3.94 ERA. Obviously, he started off the year really well, hasn't quite been as good since. And does not start today off too well. The first batter of the game, longtime Pittsburgh Pirate outfielder, Starling Marte goes deep into left field. His 11th home run of the season. And the Cubbies are quickly on the board. Here's Anthony Rizzo, 1-2 pitch. Going to go down on the inside slider. Got some lefty on lefty crime there. Herman Marquez is on the hill for the Cubs. Herman Marquez is a really good pitcher. The Cubs just acquired him. He's kind of like, if you watch the NBA, he's like the Tobias Harris of baseball. A young player who's really good but just can't find a set home. I think the Cubs can be that spot for him uh, if they want to continue to develop him because he is a beast in MLB The Show Sim. Here's O'Neill Cruz. He is actually doesn't he doesn't have a lot of energy because he's played a lot recently. If he had energy, I think that ball could have gone over the fence, but he's gonna have to settle with a triple instead. Oh no, Cruz actually leads the NL in triples now with eight. Uh, it doesn't really matter as Dylan Carlson will ground out to short, so Cruz does not score and it will remain one nothing as we go to the second. Ian half up up of a plate, full count pitch. He's gonna go down on the low curve ball. Nice pitch from Julio Urias. Here's Aramis Ademan. This is his first major league at bat, but he's played in over 30 games this year for the Cubs because he's been used as like a pinch runner, sometimes a pinch fielder. He's just never hit, which is really weird. I don't think I've ever heard of a situation where a guy plays over 30 games, doesn't get a single at bat. Oh, well. Here's Brian Reynolds here in the bottom of the third going to hit an RBI single, tying the game up at one apiece. Full count now for O'Neill Cruz. He rips that one, and it will drop fair. Looked like it was going to curve foul, if we're being honest. However, uh, it does stay fair. That'll be a double for Cruz. And uh, if we look at it again, it hit the line, the foul line. So technically, that is fair. 
and that'll be a double for O'Neill Cruz. Here's Josh Bell now up with two on uh, and one out. He's going to ground out to second. Brian Reynolds does come home to score. Pittsburgh will lead it two to one. Here is Dylan Carlson now. Uh, the next volleying batter after Bell crushes that one into right. It goes off the foul pole. That'll be a home run. It's 26 of the season. And the Pirates have put up a four spot here in the bottom of the third. Not a great inning of work for Herman Marquez. On to the fourth inning. Look at that pitch. A curveball curving barely into the strike zone. An absolute beauty for Julio Urias as we now go to the bottom of the fourth. Francisco Mejia crushes it into right field. And the Pirates will now make it 6 to one, his 23rd home run of the season, and Herman Marquez is really starting to struggle right now. Top of the fifth. Here's Julio Urias continuing to cook. He strikes out Mike Tauchman, pinch hitter. Freddie Galvez up with two on and two outs. Going to fly out to center. Brian Reynolds makes the catch, and we now go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Rogelio Armenteros in for the Cubs. 28 appearances, 61 innings pitched, so he can go multiple innings which is good for Chicago. Leadoff batter is O'Neill Cruz. He's already two for two with a pair of extra base hits today. Going to make it three for three. Probably would have gotten a single, but since the ball went over the fence, it's now going to be a ground rule double. And at surface value, that looks good, but now that could prevent Cruz from hitting the cycle of his next at bat is a home run. So, oh well. There's Josh Bell striking out. He thought that high fastball was going to curve low. It didn't. Dylan Carlson now grounds out... Uh, to the catcher, and then O'Neill Cruz decides to play mind games. He wanted to turn home, but then went back to third, but not before Anthony Rizzo makes the quick play to throw it back to third to get the out. Now let's go to the top of the six. Six to one remains the score. Here is Gerard Daniels going deep. This is Benny Lane's competition for rookie of the year. Gerard Daniels is a really solid season. Only thing is Daniels is 10 years older than Benny Lane. Gerard Daniels here is 29, and Benny Lane is 19. <laughs> Oh, well, here's Anthony Rizzo now, not too long later. Actually, the following batter, he will go deep into right field. And the Cubs have hit back-to-back -back home runs. They will now make it 6-3 to three as they try to widen this gap. Bottom six. Speaking of Benny Lane, he's going to go down on the low changeup. Nice pitch from Armenteros. Don't know if he's related to Pirates prospect Lazaro Armenteros. Here's the pinch hitter, Bo Bichette, of course, who got the day off. Uh, strikes out with a couple runners on, so kind of chokes there. On to the seventh inning. Look who's into the game. Will Smith, his first appearance as a Pirate. Here is Aramis Edemon. Uh, he will ground out. So a successful 1-2 inning for Will Smith, his first as a Pirate. And now we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. O'Neill Cruz currently 3-for-3 three three up to this point. Not going to make it 4-for-4. Four four. As he thought that ball was going to curve low, it does not for a strikeout. So here, the following batter, the reigning National League MVP, Josh Bell, who sends that one a beaut. Deep into right field over the fence for Josh Bell. That's his 33rd home run of the season as he continues to mash the cover off the baseball. And it is now 7-3. On the top of the eighth inning, the pinch hitter, Wilmer Flores, leading things off. He hits that one into straightaway center. An absolute nuke. You might as well call him Kim Jong-un. 444 feet. That ball was a no-doubter. And the Cubs will now make it 7-4. to four. The first run, Will Smith is allowed as a Pittsburgh Pirate. Here's Gerard Daniels now. He's just a window shopper. Say it with me, kids, because he's just looking. Bottom of the eighth now, Jeremy Jeffers, the veteran, is into the game. His 58th appearance of the year. And his inning will be quite successful because I clearly didn't have to show anything. Ken Giles now in here in the ninth inning, trying to get his 36th save of the season. Here's Wilson Contreras. He will strike out. Uh, Jose Martinez now 2-2 pitch. Uh, he usually is pretty good discipline, but I don't know what he was swinging at. Benny Lane makes a really bad play. Luckily, Yandy Diaz is there to make the out. And then the final hope for Chicago is Ian Happ, who will strike out. So that's how this game ends. The Pirates win it 7-4. We go 2-0 in today's episode. I don't usually go 2-0 in games played, so I suppose that is fun. Seven runs, 12 hits. The guys hit the ball really well in this one. Looking at the Cubs, home runs for Flores, Rizzo, Marte, and Gerard Daniels. 
All of their runs were off of solo shots. Ramar Marquez was kind of disappointing. He gets the loss. Meanwhile, for the Pirates, O'Neill Cruz played really well. Dylan Carlson with a couple hits and a couple RBIs. Home runs for Carlson, Josh Bell, and Francisco Mejia. Julio Urias gets the win. I think he pitched really well. He just allowed uh, a few too many home runs. So we would simulate about two weeks. Now 76 and 45. In this two-week span, four players on the Major League roster have gotten their potential up. And no, I'm talking like literally they've gotten it up within the past two weeks. You're going to have to find out next episode who those players are. Uh, now five and a half games ahead of Milwaukee. So we really haven't gained or lost any ground with them. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. Peace out. Thank you.